He's a monkey man. Yes. All right, we are on mic. Make up. We are make up. Make up. Hello and welcome I to the I was first. Gonna do it. Oh, well, you said you can do it. Happy New Year, everybody! Welcome to the first episode of 2019, the Blaine and Katie Weekly Update. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> and this is a very special week because we get to start by bringing you a brand new Japan guide from us. <gasps> Wow. We went to Nibori Betsu <laughs> this last winter, and it was fantastic. We definitely recommend. Also known as Jigoku Dani, or Hell's Valley. It Don't is we. a really fun place where you try to survive being eaten from an oni. Ha ha. And if you guys want to learn more about Nibori Betsu in Hokkaido so you can plan your trip, we're going to have our link in the description with the rest of the videos. So one of the first videos we saw from this last week was from Tokyo Creative, and they did this really fun Harajuku $10 challenge. I don't know if you guys have been to Harajuku, but it's crowded, it's insane. Sometimes it's expensive, but sometimes there's these cheap little side golden... Shops. Yeah, yeah, side shops. Yeah, side shops. places you can get something for not too expensive. Yeah, like a 390 yen store, and there's always these cute things. Lots of English. Anyway, they had a lot of fun with it. We had Emma, Paris, and Natasha go head to head to see who could shop for $10, get three specific items, and do it all in the shortest amount of time possible. It was a really fun video. Check it out. Next, we got the last of the Vlogmas from Tokidoki Traveler, where she got to go out and have some fun on the ice, as well as a pretty fun panda ride. It just lasts a while because it takes forever to get where it's going. <laughs> You could do it, Emma. And one of my favorite videos from this week was from Ask Japanese, and she did a unique ASMR video for Mimi Kaki or ear cleaning in Japan, which is pretty popular over there. And last time on our trip to Japan, we got to experience it for the first time. And here's a secret it's really magical. It's pretty awesome. fantastic. And yeah. it, it's one of those things you go into and, you know, they don't speak a lot of English uh, at all. And so they're really hesitant, like, I don't know about this. You know, it, you know, foreigners, foreigners coming, coming in. in and you're like, OK, no, no, no. You start talking to me like, hey, when's your next appointment? When's this? You know, when can we do it? So we'll have a video coming out on our experience with that as well. Really fantastic. If you have the chance to go, I would say go and do it. It's not weird at all. You know, you'd think yeah. having somebody like really close getting inside your ear would be kind of kind of weird and kind of like, eh, but it was mm. actually really comfortable. Yeah. And you feel amazing afterwards. And for all my fellow sneaker heads, we also had Carlo Opal going to Harajuku, giving us all of the best places that he could find to shop for some cool shoes. Now, keep in mind, he is coming from the Philippines, so his idea of what he can and can't find is a little different than mine coming from Seattle here. And still really good for showing us what some of the best stores to stop in are. Get your Yeezys, yo. You may recall a couple weeks ago, we talked about Conan O'Brien and his journey to Japan. One of those videos was where he decided to rent a family. Hilarity ensues. It's a great video. Then we had Asian Boss this week give a video about the guy who started the company for rental families in Japan. And it's really fascinating about the whole culture of Japan and how families are super important. They, they go into a lot more detail than I really have time for here, but you guys should watch it. Then we had Sam and Audrey bringing us the tallest ice cream in Japan. And it looks really cool. It's very pretty. And mm. I don't know about all the flavors mashed up on one another. Yeah, banana and ramune. Yeah, hmm. like I'd have to eat my way down through it, you know, just so that I get one flavor at a time. But I'm the guy that gets chocolate ice cream and puts chocolate syrup on my chocolate ice cream. So I'm, he's a freak. I don't I'm know freak, what to say. I guess. <laughs> next, next thing they'll have a swirl. <laughs> just all the flavors in each bite. Ooh, that gave me heebie jeebies. It's like a that Willy Wonka gross. flavor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, their video is really fun. You should check it out. Now it's time for a special Lucky, Lucky Bag, Bag Lightning, Lightning Round. round. Choo choo! For those of you who don't know, in the New Year in Japan, there's often these fukubukuro or lucky bags where they take old last year's stock of things like clothing or shoes and they put it in these mystery bags that you can buy, ranging anywhere from 300 yen to even like 
twenty thousand yen. I mean, I'm sure. No, twenty thousand yen is two hundred dollars. Twenty thousand yen is two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. You got it. And you don't know what you're gonna get, and that's part of the fun of it all. It's like those mystery grab bags that you see at places, just with all of last year's stock. So you take end of the year sales and combine that with the mystery bag. Scratch a little bit of that gambling itch. So be careful if you've got any sort of propensity to that. I mean, it's true. I mean, if you've got like a gambling problem, you may not want to go to Japan during the New Year's. Long story short, whatever you end up paying for the bag, generally there's at least two times the amount worth of stuff. So if you pay two hundred dollars, it's probably four hundred dollars worth of stuff. It's a good deal. For my top three lucky bag unbagging videos, first we have. Gourney Co, who does this fabulous Forever 21 unboxing. Unbagging. Unbagging, and she's hilarious. Check out her video. Then we have Kim Dow, who did Pokemon. Finally, we have Peach Milky, who did Ingu, Three Coins, and Peach John. Check them out. Anything good in all those bags, Katie? <laughs> yeah, there's a giant <laughs> in one of them, so. Ah, <laughs> oh, no one spoil. Cut that out. No I'll spoilers. cut that out. And now it's time for News, News in, in Japan. Japan. So by now we all know that Japanese whiskey is amazing. I have to buy four liter bottles of this whenever I come back because they don't sell this in America, despite it being delicious and actually like the bottom of the barrel in Japan. See, even the century's lowest quality of whiskey is incredible. And obviously we love it. So, but what about other types of liquors? So gins, vodkas, well, at the International Wine and Spirit Competition last year, which was held in Britain, Kinobi Kyoto Dry Gin from Kyoto Distillery, they won the top contemporary prize award for their gin. <laughs> and that's saying a lot, I feel like, coming from Japan, right? Where gin's not very popular. Yeah, I'm trying to think, because typically if we get gin in Japan, it's a Uh-oh, it's a Blaine or, rant. You know, gin and tonic. How many times it's, can it's one person say the word gin in one sentence? heavily mixed with other flavors. Do we have so gin here at home? Like a, they don't do gin high, right? So they're not really Man, gin, gin buck sounds gin pretty high. good right now. Wait a minute. Is he Maybe done yet? we should think about making this taste amazing. Nope, he's still <laughs> talking, just smile like and nod. So what do I say as soon as he's done talking, though? I love gin. And then last year at the International Spirits Challenge, Nika Coffee Vodka of Nika Distillery won the top prize for their vodka. Well, that makes a lot of sense. The coffee still that they use to make those vodkas, they also make a gin. And mm. by golly, that was e the easiest <sighs> sipping gin I've ever had. So any vodka so coming out of that machine is going to be so smooth. It was so good, you guys. And again, like Blaine said, it's not coffee flavored vodka. It's a coffee still how they distill it. Anyway, science. You can check it out on their website. Basically, it's a still. And it's here still we go again. Permanently making Crap, I thought I could avoid this by so saying, like oh, it's just science, blah, blah, blah. To having all the Man, we got two Blaine rant jokes in one video. We're pretty gutsy. And how does he remember all this stuff? The coffee still, Such a nerd. Uh, Man, I can't call him a nerd. I don't want to call him a nerd. Don't call him a nerd. Don't call him a nerd. Don't call him a nerd. He's such a nerd. With all that being said, Japan is up and coming with making more different types of liquors. They're increasingly making more products such as gin and vodkas because of the shortage of malt whiskeys throughout Japan because of its popularity. So switch it up. Try some gin. You might like a gin book. In our next story, Japan is going to leave the International Whaling Commission, or the IWC. Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Let's go over some of the points and see if we can get a discussion going in the comments below. For starters, we found reported that whale meat makes up less than 0.1% of Japan's meat market. So it's a very small market that they're actually trying to cater to here. And originally, in the post-war era, Japan was hunting whales because it was a cheap and easy way to get meat. However, now, with the abundance of meat that you'll find in Japan, it's really not a necessity anymore. Yeah. And so, the need is really starting to disappear. That being said, they've been a part of the IWC, and the IWC bans whaling commercially. And what they've been doing is they've been hunting whales scientifically. And so after they've done their research on the whale, they then sell the meat so as not to waste it. And so they've been using this to get around the ban on commercial whaling. Now, 
Where they hunt whales for scientific research is the Antarctic, and so that'll get a little more important as we move forward. The initial reaction a lot of people have when I've told them about this is that that's awful, that's horrible, that's going to be a, a terrible thing, and I think we can all agree that hunting endangered whales, it would be a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. However, let's kind of go over some of the things that could be a positive here. Like I said, Japan has been hunting whales in the Antarctic. And so by stopping that scientific research, leaving the commission, and then now hunting whales in their own territorial waters, there's going to be a much lessened impact on the Antarctic waters. So we can keep those as pristine as can be. The other thing we won't need to look at is the fact that the mink whale that they are hunting, that there is the primary target. There are other whales, I will agree, that do get hunted while they're going for the mink whale. However, the mink that they do primarily target is so stable that just a quick Google search puts it as the least concern on the endangered list. Japan is also not alone in whaling. There are quite a few countries that still whale, including our neighbor to the north, Canada, as well as Norway and Greenland, who hunt quite a few more whales than Japan does. Now, that being said, Japan has been sort of having to hide the fact that they're hunting whales, so those numbers could change as soon as we move forward, but only time will tell as far as that's concerned. So it's an interesting discussion to be had because we're going to see Japan stopping hunting in the Antarctic, moving into their own territorial waters, allowing the Antarctic waters to sort of come back to what they need to be. Mm -hmm. They're hunting a whale that is extremely plentiful, so there's not really an endangered species concern with this. And it's really only 0.1% of the meat market in the country. So even if we were to say, hey, hunt as much as you want, there's a high probability that demand alone could drive it down to the point where it just does not become profitable anymore to hunt whale. Of course, those are just the reports I came across. If you're involved in the industry, if you have somebody who works at Greenpeace, who has other knowledge about what's going on with the Japanese hunting system, uh, you definitely want to hear from you in the comments mm -hmm. below. Again, let's, let's try to keep it civil. Let's try to discuss, okay, what are the pros? What are the cons? Do you think this move is good? Do you think it's bad? Is it neutral since they've already been hunting this whole time? I, I want to hear from you in the comments. And that brings us to the kanji of the week. What do you have for us, Katie? I'm sure many of you are going to be trying onsens while you're in Japan as it's a very popular pastime over there. So we are going to be showing you the kanji for women or female, which is Ona. And you'll see this kanji on the entrance curtain into the baths. So pretty important. Albeit, yes, they are color-coded, so it should be obvious. Women are red, guys are blue. So you don't want to walk into the wrong bath, now do you? So memorize this. There's also oto, which is the male kanji. Memorize which one the, is the female one, the ona, because it's way easier to say, oh, that one's not the female one, as opposed to that one is the male one. Memorize these. Make sure you go into the right bath. Could be a funny story in the end, but very embarrassing. And that's all we have for you this week. Again, links to all the videos we've talked about are down in the description below. Give a shout out, let them know that we sent you, and have a wonderful week. See you guys next time. See ya. Bye.